Okay, so here we go, guys. We're videoing, so participation, please. Participation. So 1.2. So the last thing that you just did was, do you remember? Tell me what your last note was. The candle. The candle? The candle problem. Yeah. Your last problem was the candle problem. Yes. Okay, that should have been it. It was example three. Okay, so now we're going on to the next step. We're still in 1.2. So 14XY. It's easier if you write it down while I say it than you look back and forth, okay? And trust me, I'm going I'm to say it to you, okay? 14XYABFE. <laughs> Okay, so just leave that right there and let's go down here and let's do some definitions. Okay, so the first definition is terms. Terms. Do you know what a term is? Yes. Okay, how many terms are right here? Six, seven, seven, eight, seven, one. One. So, no, you don't know what a term is. Okay, this is one term, all right? Terms are separated by what? Periods. What? What's uh, <laughs> uh, like, um, the sentence? Uh, yeah. What's that? Addition. Addition. A plus, plus and minus sign. Do you see any plus and minus signs up here? No. no. It has a lot of variables, doesn't it? Okay, but it is only one term, all right? One term. The more letters you put on there, the more kids will think it's more than one term. Okay? So, the next thing we're going to define. Oh, let's, before we do that, write this down. You can erase the pencil. I am pen. Pencil didn't show up so great right here. So, 2x squared minus 7x plus 4. 2x squared minus 7x plus 4. I remember this from the other one. How many terms? Three. Very good. See how smart you are now? I'm so intelligent. All right. Okay, so the next one is a variable. Y'all call it a variable, but I call it a variable. Is there an I in there? What? Variable. There's an I. Variable. All right. So a variable is a what? There's a letter. Yeah, it's just a letter. Because we don't know what something is, then we represent it with a letter and we call it a variable. So it does an unknown. It represents an unknown. All right, the next one, coefficient. Okay, a coefficient. A coefficient is a number in front of and multiplied by a variable. Okay, a number in front of and multiplied by a variable. It's only in front of the variable because that's the proper way to write it, okay? So in this, do you see any coefficients? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. Two is a coefficient. What's the other one? Seven. 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 Oh, I like that. That seven. sign right there belongs to that number, doesn't it? Is there a difference between seven and negative seven? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here we go. The next one, constant. A constant. Y'all, is there a constant up here? What is it? Four. 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 That's right. And you know why it's called a constant? It's constantly four. Is this only four today because it's Friday? No. It's, it'll be four on Monday, four on Tuesday, four on Wednesday. It's constantly four. It's all just a plain old number. Okay? A plain number is a constant. All right, so let's do some problems. Extremely difficult problems. Are you ready? Yeah, I know y'all been hearing about this stuff. All right, so example 4a. Here we go. 8x plus 3x. Don't say the answer, just write it down. I think 
8x plus 3x. We work it or? I'd like you to work it. If you can't work it, we might have a problem. <laughs> what do you say? 11x. If you have 8x's and I give you 3 more x's, you now have 11x's. Okay? Collecting like terms. Are you with me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So here's the next problem. It's longer, so write it down as I say it, okay? 5p squared plus p minus 2p squared minus 8 plus 10p. I know how to do this one too. Mark. Okay, so y'all, this is really all algebra one, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so here's the way you do this one. When you have multiple things that you have to collect, you but they're all the same letter or all the same variable, you start at the highest exponent, okay? So two is my highest exponent. So it's five P squared. Are there any more P squares? Yes. yes. So what is five P squared minus two P squared? Three, Three P squared. P squared. Very good. Okay, and then you go down. Your your exponent should be descending order. So a positive P. Is that the only P? No. No, there's a 10P. What is 1P plus 10P? 11P. Perfect. So I'm going to say plus 11P. And then anything else? Eight. Eight. Negative 8. Does he have any anybody he can collect with? No. So we just write him down. Okay, now we're going to do one that might be algebra 1.7. Okay, so write down as I say, all right, write down as I say because it'll be a lot easier. Three open brackets. I'm going to let you look up here because okay. a bunch of you when I said the word bracket are like, what? There's an open bracket. Four minus two, open the parentheses. X minus six, close the parentheses, close the brackets. Plus two, open the parentheses. X minus five Y, close the parentheses. Minus seven, open the parentheses. <laughs> y plus three, close the parentheses. Open them again. Divide it, no, I'm just playing. We're stopping. <laughs> And you're like, yes, I sure can. Okay, so here we go. Um, what are we going to follow here? Very good. I'm so smart. All right, so this P stands for what? Parentheses. Y'all, what that means is work inside the parentheses. Can you add, or can you collect X and minus 6? No. What about x and negative 5y? No. What about y and 3? No. Okay, so really there are no parentheses that we can work inside. Uh, All right? Brackets, now, exponents. Are there any exponents? Yeah. yeah. No. No. No exponents. Okay. What about any multiplication or division? You need to okay. What property is this called? Distributive. Distributive property. Now listen to me, guys. I got a lot of them. So y'all listen. Distributive property, this is where on the test, a third of the class is going to miss problems because of the distributive property. Okay? That's crazy. And I'm going to tell you even more of the class is going to miss when you have to distribute a negative. So anytime I see a problem and I'm distributing a negative, my brain goes, uh-oh, they're trying to trick you. You better be very careful. Okay? The most common mistake is to only distribute to the first term and not to distribute to the second term. So this is what I do to keep from making that mistake. Now, am I going to count your problem wrong if you don't do that? No. no. no I'm just telling you to keep you from making a mistake, okay, that this is a good thing to do, all right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to distribute this guy, and then there's another negative. I'm going to be very careful with that guy. Okay, so I'll leave the three, open the brackets, and there's my four. I'm distributing the negative two throughout the parentheses. What's negative two times x? Negative two x. What's negative two times negative six? Positive. 
Close those brackets. I got rid of the parentheses, guys, but I still got the brackets, okay? What's positive 2 times x? What's positive 2 times negative 5? Okay, now let me tell you what the goal is, because I'm back here, yak, 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 yak. You should be working ahead of me, okay? If you're copying down what I say, then you're not really learning that much. But if you're working ahead of me, because I'm talking back here, then you're gonna see what kind of mistakes you're gonna make and you can fix them, all right? And you won't make them on the worksheet or the test, you'll be fixing them here during your stuff, okay? So when I distribute a negative seven, I will get what? Negative seven. Uh-huh. What? Yeah, you gotta do it to the second guy, minus 21, okay? Now, I'm gonna stop right here and I'm gonna collect any of my like terms. I'm gonna go in here and collect any like terms if I have them, and out here. So inside these brackets, do I have any like terms? Yes. yes. Four and 12. So now I've got three, open the brackets, and I'm gonna put my variable first, because normally it's proper to put the variable first and your constants go last. So negative two X and four and 12 make 16. Okay, out here, did y'all find any common like terms? Okay, the y's. So these two right here. So I'll just still say plus 2x and minus what, 17y? Yes, sir. And then minus 21. All right, now what am I going to do? That's exactly right. I'm going to distribute this 3 throughout those parentheses. Okay? Everything, it's actually not parentheses, it's brackets, but whatever. Okay? Everything in the brackets gets multiplied by this 3. So, now see, you should already have it done and be writing that down, all right? So three times negative two x is negative six x, and then three times 16 is 48, guys, okay? And then plus two x minus 17 y minus 21. All right, so, wow, how do I know who goes first? Uh, X's. Why do the X's go first? first and That's exactly right, because we put them in alphabetical order when you have more than one variable, okay? So X's are first in the alphabet. What is negative 6X and positive 2X? Negative 4. Good. What is just negative 17Y? Yes. And then what is a positive 48 and a negative 21? And there is my answer. Does anybody have a question? Okay, is this stuff you should know? Yes. Okay, so, and are you remember what I told y'all about the test like yesterday or day before when we talked about the test? And I said that a lot of times this test is, kids mess up on this test, make a lot of careless mistakes, and then they cry when we go over it because they're, they're feeling bad because they're feeling stupid because they made those bad mistakes. <laughs> All right, so we don't want to be crying, okay? So let's pay attention. All right, here's your next problem. The next problem is a reading problem, okay? So, um, let me find it, there it is. Um, it is example five. I'm still in one, two, okay? This is the last problem in one, two, and then we'll start on one, three. All right. So here we go. I'm gonna read the whole problem first, and this is what I want you to be looking for, okay, or listening for. Um, the variable. Did they tell you what variable to use and what does it represent? Everybody got it? Okay, so here we go. You send 15 digital images to a printing service that charges 80 cents per print in large format and 20 cents per print in small format. Write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost if n of the 15 prints are in large formats. So did you have a variable? Yes. What was it? N. And what does it represent? Large format. Very good. The number of large, and y'all listen to me, really, what are we talking about? Large uh, print. You're talking about pictures, people. Uh, large pictures and small pictures. That's what they're talking about, okay? So N is the number of large prints or large pictures, whichever one you want to write. 
Okay, now I'm going to read the problem and we're going to write the important stuff down. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. You send 15 di digital images to a printing service that charges, hello, y'all should say stop. Uh, uh, How many print? 15. 15. Very good. Write that down. 15 is the number of print. Um, to a printing service that charges 80 cents per print in large format. Stop, stop. Oh, wait, okay. no, no, so ahead. the largest cost how much? 80 cents. 80 cents. That's 0.80. People don't write 80 with a cent sign. Okay, 0 0.80. Small are 20 cents per print. Stop. Okay. Okay, so now here's what it says. Write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost. Well, just like we did the other day, we're going to do this one. We're going to write an equation. Or the, uh -oh, can't spell. Total cost. Total cost is. Do you agree that the total cost is going to be the cost of the large? Plus the cost of the small? I got that? Okay. So, how much are the large going to cost? Uh, 80 cents. Each one, how many? Fifteen. Mm -hmm. N. N is the number of large prints. You see that? We did fifteen in all, but N is the number of large prints. So what's the total cost of the large? Eighty cents. Point eighty N. Yeah, it's eighty cents for how much? Each one, or is it eighty cents for all of them? For each one. Yeah, it's not like. I'll make you however many prints you want, and I'll charge you 80 cents. It's every time you make me make a large print, I'm going to charge you 80 cents, okay? And we're doing N of them. Are you with me? Yeah. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Plus the cost of the small. How much did the smalls cost? Oh, I, I wrote 25, and I was supposed to write what? 20. 20. I'm sorry. I was probably, I don't know what's happening. I told y'all, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Having a hard time right now. All right, so each small one costs 20 cents. How many small ones are we doing? Yeah. No, that's the large one. We don't know yet. We need a new variable. Okay, Cole, if I put a new, that's what a lot of kids say, right? So if I put 0.20 M here, and M being the small ones, could you solve that? No. Because you can't solve it one equation with two unknowns, can you? No. Okay, so that's a problem. we got to fix it. All right, so we need to know. So I'm gonna teach you a skill. Y'all, this happens a lot of times. They give you, you got two different things. There is a relationship between these two things, but you can't figure out, one of them is a variable and you can't figure out what the other one is. So here's what I'm gonna teach you to do. Make you up a little chart here. Now watch, let's pretend that I know what this is. Not that it's N, okay, because N to my brain goes, what? So let's, let's pick a number. Let's say that we did five large prints. How many would be the small prints? Ten. Ten? What if we did seven large prints? What would, how many smalls? Eight. Eight. Some people are going, whoa, wait, where did they get that number? Because it says we did 15 prints. Okay? So if five of them were large, ten are small. If seven of them are large, eight are small. What about if two of them are large? Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen of them are small. <laughs> what about if ten of them are large? Five. Five. What, what are you doing to get this number over here? That's what I want to know. I figured it The difference between fifteen and oh. What? You, you can't, let's say we can't use this number. So that means you can't do that operation. Okay. There you go. That's what I want to hear. So how are you getting this number? You're going 15 minus 5 is 10. 15 minus 7 is 8. 15 minus 2 is 13. 15 minus 10. So we have a total of 15 prints. So if I take the large ones out, I'll be the small ones. Is what we're doing working? Then keep doing it. Watch this. Ian. Ian. What's this? Equals 15. How did you get this? So what is it? 15 minus 10. No. No, negative 15. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. 
Did you take this guy right here and say Two. negative 15 times this Two to get this? Oh, just kidding. No. Then why are you telling me negative 15 in? What are y'all talking about? Uh, what you know, you right right okay, oh. I'm going to start again. Listen to me. I'm going to say it this time, all right? If I tell you this number, can you find this number yeah. right here? Yes. 15 minus 5 is 10. 15 minus 7 is 8. 15 minus, 15 minus 2 is 13. 15 minus N is 5. Sorry, 10. 15 minus 10 is 5. 15 minus N is the small. Did you hear what I said when I said, is what you're doing working? And you said yes, and I said, then don't stop. And everybody stopped and started doing something else. Let's do 15 in. Let's do n minus 3. No, people. What you were doing was working, so keep doing it, all right? So this is the number of small ones. What am I going to multiply it by? Uh, 0.20. 15 minus 15 n. Okay? I, we're going to um, work this out. Yeah, we're going to work this out. Thank you for saying that. I'm going to put a star by this because this is a skill that you need to have. Okay? It's going to come up again before we have our test. It'll probably come up again. And as the year goes by, it'll come up more and more. All right. So here we go. First of all, we're going to have to distribute. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. So this is equal to 0.80 N plus. Do I need that zero right there? Not really. So I'm just going to kind of not think about him. What is 2 times 15? What? 30. 2 times 15 is 30. And I have only the 2 is behind the decimal point. So, so when you move it, yeah, when you move the decimal point one place to the left, it's just 3. Okay? And y'all, you'd have a calculator if you couldn't do that. You'd be okay. And then 0.2 times negative n is negative 0.2n. Do I have any like terms? Yes. Yes. 0.80n minus 0.2n. What is that? I thought it was negative 0.2n. So that's why I said minus 0.2n. 0.60n plus 3. Okay? That's my total cost. Now, what if I said find the total cost when you ordered five large prints. Okay, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to plug in five. I'm going to plug in five for N because N is the number of large prints. All right, so I'm going to say 0. 0.60 times five plus three. What's five times six? 30, move your decimal point one place to the left, and what does that become? Three. What is three plus three? Six. Six dollars. Six dollars. All right, anybody got a question? Okay, so that is all of 1.2, okay? It's really about application problems but it is also about collecting like terms, okay? You need to know how to collect like terms. All right, we're going to quickly do 1.3 and then I'll give you the rest of the time to um, work on your worksheet. But y'all listen to me. Please don't think that that's the way it's gonna happen all the time, okay? I'm gonna let you, if you have a question or something, I'm gonna let you ask those, okay? But normally, I don't do that. You have an advisory period that you could come in. That and it, you have one, you have one after this class, and you have one the next day. So you have two advisory periods before something's due at the earliest. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. Um, and I usually, not always, I don't have to be at school till 7:45, but I usually try to get here around 7:30. So if you'd like to come early, um, then if you'll text me on remind or something. Then um, I will, and you say, Miss Davis, what time are you going to be there in the morning? Because um, there are some times when I, I'll be like, oh, well, I got something to do in the morning, so I'm not going to be there until 7.45. So 
But if you say, I'm going to be there at 7.30, then I'll say, okay, I'll be there at 7.30. All right, so 1.3 is solve linear equations. Okay, now should you know how to do this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the whole purpose of this is for me to make sure that you know how to do it, okay, to reinforce your learning and to tell you some little um, particular picky things that I might be particular about, all right? So example one, linear simply means if you graphed it, it would be a line, okay, and it only has an x to the first. Okay, a linear equation will only have an x to the first in it. All right, so here's my first one. Four fifths x plus eight is equal to 20. All right, so I'm checking to see, do you know how to solve this equation? What is the first thing you should do? Subtract eight. Very good. So you should be working ahead of me. Am I showing my work? Yes, yes I am. I'm showing my work for two reasons. Um, first of all, it keeps me from making careless mistakes. And second of all, if someone came to my desk and they wanted some help, the first thing they could do is look on my paper and see what I was doing. All right? There's no, you don't have to ask me any questions. You can see exactly what I'm doing. So over here, I have 4 this x is equal to what's 20 minus 8? 12. Okay, so I'll write a 12 down. Now, they multiply by 4 fifths, but you're going to... The divide. Yeah, you're going to divide. And the way you divide by a fraction is reciprocal. multiply by is reciprocal. So y'all listen to me. If this coefficient or this constant, if either one of these are a fraction, you're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient, regardless of if he's a fraction or not. Okay? So I'm going to multiply by uh, five, over four. 5 over 4. Both sides. What you do to one side, you do to the other side. Okay? These fours cancel out, fives cancel out. Any number times his reciprocal is one. Y'all, that is the multiplicative inverse property. Okay? That's the inverse property of multiplication right there. So this is 1x is equal to. Now I want everybody to look up here for just a second. I want to show you something. I'm always amazed that kids don't know this. All right? What does this sign right here mean? Divide. Okay, so you're going to divide by the bottom number, multiply by the top. Divide by the bottom, multiply by the top. How many times does 4 go into 12? 3. three. What is 3 times 5? 15. Whoa, whoa. That is all you're doing, people. Was that hard? No. Did I need a calculator? No. I need a calculator. Okay? You are dividing by the bottom number and multiplying by the top. Yeah. Okay, and here's, here's what I did. 12 times 5 fourths. This sign is a division sign. This line is a division sign. So you're going to divide by the bottom number and multiply by the top. Oh, yeah, I got that. Okay. Uh, I just, so you take the bottom number of the fraction and then you multiply, or divide it by 12? No, you divide it into 12. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Four goes into 12 three times, and then you multiply by the top. Okay. Three times five is 15. Okay? Now, what am I going to do with this number right here? I am going to plug it back in. Okay? Now, listen to me. If this was a test, uh, I mean, pardon me, if this was a worksheet and we were working on it right here in class, you know, and I got 15, I'd say, hey, Diana, did you get 15 on number one? And she would be like, yeah, I did. And I'd say, oh, okay. And I'd go on about my business. Now, when I'm taking a test, can I do that? Yeah. No, that's cheating. Okay? So, you need to know how to check it on your calculator. All right? So, all I'm going to do is plug it back in here. If you want to, you can make it look exactly like this. You can go alpha and y equals and get you a fraction. Four on the top, five on the bottom, times 15 plus 8. I always say a little prayer here. Please, Lord, let me 20. Boom. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, do I know that this is right? Yes. 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 People, there's no way the teacher can mark that wrong. Okay? It is correct. I checked it. It worked out right. Okay? 
So here's my next one. Example two. This is a reading problem. Okay? It's a reading problem. All right. What does this one say? Um, this one says that you are a waiter. Okay? So during one shift, a waiter earns wages of $30 and gets an additional 15% in tips on customers' food bills. The waiter earns $105. What is the total of the customer's food bill? Did it tell me what variable to use? No. No. So you can use whatever variable you like, okay? I'm going to use what? X. X. Okay, I like X. And so X represents the total of the customer's food bills. Okay, now I'm going to read it again and we're going to write the stuff down that's important. Everybody got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so during one shift, a waiter earns wages of $30. Stop. Okay, so his wages are $30. And what does that mean? Yeah, plus he's going to get something else, okay? He gets an additional. 15% in tips on customers' food bills. Okay? So 15%, we are going to. 15% of customers' food bills. No. Okay? The waiter earns a total of $105. So he earns. $105. Okay, so they're wanting to know what is the total of the customer's food bill. So what we have to do is we have to make up an equation that involves this X. Alright? So if this is the total that I earned, that's exactly right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on the other end. Okay, I'm going to make it equal 105 because it'll look more like what I like it to look like. So what does he start off making? $30. $30 plus 15%. Now, just like y'all said, you can't put that percent in a problem like that. You have to change it into a decimal. How do I do that? You go backwards to your Very good. You go backwards, you move your decimal point two places to the left because this is 15% out of 100. That's the total. And 100 has two zeros. So when you divide it, just move the decimal point two places to the left. So 0.15, 15% of, of means times, guys. There's, that's right for that. Okay, so of the customer's food bills, what are those? That's X. X. And that is how much I will make, $105. Okay, are you with me? Yes, sir. Tell me what to do. Minus 30. Minus 30. Math. We're going to math that dude. <laughs> 0.15x is equal to what's 105 minus 30? 75. What do you have to add to 3 to get a 10? Actually, 7. Yeah. So, you with me? Yeah. Now what do I do? Divide by 0.15, which is totally different than 1.5, people. Okay? So, x is equal to. So, I'll take my handy dandy calculator. And I will say 75 divided by 0.15, and it will tell me 500. Yes, sir. Okay, now listen to me. Because every time I work a real life problem, my brain has to be thinking, is this reasonable? All right, is this reasonable? No. Okay, so some of y'all, and part of it's because you're not looking at the problem in the book, but look what this says. Customers. Total customers food bill. It doesn't say total customer food bill. It's not one person, but it's all their customers that they waited on that night, right? Now is that reasonable? Yes, yes that is reasonable. Okay? Anybody got a question? Okay, let's keep going. We got about what two more problems? Yes, two more problems. Okay. So it shouldn't take us long. Example three. 4P plus 15 equals 7P minus 30. All right, so what's, 
What's different about this problem? It seems like we already worked something like this. Yeah, we have to on both sides. subtract or subtract. Oh, okay. We got P's on both sides. Oh, that could be a problem. All right. So we got to put the P's on one side. Is there a particular side you have to put them on? No. No. Personally, I'm going to pick the side that has the most, and here's why. I know that one of my weaknesses is dropping signs. Y'all, when I was in college and I was in a calculus class, we had a test and had five problems on the test. Each problem took a whole page to work, okay? One of the problems, I took the whole entire page and I worked the problem and I got down and the last line, I wrote X is equal to and I wrote the answer and I dropped the sign from the line before, okay? Miss <laughs> yeah. Smith said minus 20 on my paper and I was like, what? Like, are you kidding me? Like, I dropped a sign, okay? So I went up to her and I said, um, excuse me, Miss Smith, um, like this problem right here, like I had it right all the way down, but I accidentally dropped my sign on that last answer right there. And I said, you counted off 20 points. And she pointed to the last answer and said, is that right? And I said, no, ma'am. And she said, that's why it says minus 20. I said, yes, ma'am. And I, did, I try not to drop my sign anymore, okay? Because that cost me more than I can afford to pay. All right, so I'm gonna put mine over here. I'm gonna say minus four p, minus four p. So 15 is equal to what's seven p's minus four p's? Three p. Three p. Three p minus three. Now what do I do? Minus four You subtract. You add three. Plus I'm gonna add three to both sides. Plus three. Plus three. Cancels out on the right. Okay. On the left, 15 p and three p make. 18 equals 3p. Now what am I going to do? Divide by 3. And p is equal to 6. six. And then I'm going to check it, guys. Now when I check this one, can I just poke it one time in my calculator? Yeah. No. you got to check this side and this side. What should they be? The same thing. The same thing. If they're not, you're wrong. All right? So 4 times 6 plus 15, 39. 7 times 6 minus 3, please be 39. Yay! That's my answer. Alright, anybody got a question? One more. Okay, this is the last one. Um, so, example 4. There's actually one more example in this section, but we're going to do it on um, Tuesday. Alright, so here we go. 3, write this down, 3, open parentheses, 5x minus 8, close the parentheses, equals negative 2, open the parentheses, negative x plus 7, close the parentheses, and minus 12x. Okay, yeah. People, that's the distributive. And what do I see that I need to be extra careful about? Uh, negative. Yeah, when you distribute a negative, kids are more likely to make a mistake, okay? So be very careful there. So I'm going to do this to keep from making that mistake. Um, when you distribute the 3, you should get 15x minus 24 equals. I'm going to be very careful with that negative. I'm going to make sure that he changes every sign in here. Okay, so negative 2 times negative x is a positive 2x, and negative 2 times positive 7 is a negative 14. And then negative 12x. Before you start deciding what side to put things on, you need to collect all your like terms. On the left, I'm good to go. You should be working ahead. Yeah. On the right, 2x minus 12x. Did you get a negative 10x? Mm -hmm. And then minus 14. So now I'm going to decide what side to put my x's on. This guy is 10 in the hole, okay? And this guy has 15, so I'm choosing the left-hand side. It is not wrong to put them on the other side, people, okay? That's just the side that I choose. So I'm gonna add 10x to both sides. On the right, they cancel, and I only have negative 14. On the left, 10x and 15x makes 25x minus 24. So now it looks like the very first equation that we did, right? And I am going to add 24 to both sides. So 
So 25x is equal to negative 14 and positive 24 make 10. Okay, now what am I going to do? Okay, now be careful because here's where I, I'm going to have some problems. X is equal to, guys listen to me, I do not want any decimals and I do not want any mixed numbers. Okay, I want no decimals and no mixed numbers. I want a fraction. If it's improper, that's okay with me, all right? But I want a fraction. Um, the first six weeks, every time you write one of these, I'm going to put a sad face and a big no beside it, okay? After six weeks, I'll be tired of writing these and getting new pens, and then I'll be taking points away from you, okay? So I'm giving you six weeks to get used to my rule. No fractions, no mixed numbers, no decimals. All right, anytime you write a fraction, what should it be in? Yeah, lowest terms. Is what goes into 10 and five, 25 evenly? Five. five. So five goes into over two, five goes into there five times, and my answer is two fifths. Okay, now I want you to put this little note. We need example five. Okay, we need example five. That's where we're gonna stop. So here's what I want you to do. Before you even move, I want you to listen to me. Here's the rule. If I catch you copying somebody's paper, I'm chunking them both in the trash can. Okay? We're not copying. If you need some help, that's fine. That means I don't want to see you at somebody else's desk checking your paper and erasing and writing things down. If you miss something, erase it and go back and figure out what you did wrong. If you can't figure it out, then ask that person or ask me. Is everybody got it? Okay, one more thing. I didn't say this before we started. I did to the other class, but I forgot to y'all. Um, normally when we're taking notes, I don't want your worksheets out. Why? That's right. I don't want you working on your worksheet because now I'm teaching you. And what will happen is that then whenever you start to work problems like I just taught, you'll be coming up to my desk saying, Ms. Davis, I don't know how to do this. I'm like, well, of course you don't. You were working on your worksheet when you should have been listening to me. Okay? So get your worksheets out. You know which one is due today. If I were you and I had not done that, I would work on that one first. Um, and also, if you want to turn it in, go ahead and turn it in. You can lay it on top of that book up there. Okay? So hang on just a second. Let me stop the video.